Good evening, Professor Minogue and class. Here is my presentation. I'm going to be talking about communicative language teaching and literacy. The title of this article is Learning English Language in Bangladesh, CLT and Beyond. The article is by Mola Muhammad Harun R. Rashid. The population for this study was the children in public school in Bangladesh. So this study looked at English language teaching in public school classrooms. We were looking at secondary school students. Um, so a little bit about Bangladesh. Bangladesh is one of the most densely populated countries in the world, has more than 160 million people living in a relatively small area. It's also one of the poorest countries in the world. Average annual income is only about $400 a year. Bangladesh is mostly a monolingual community. However, English is increasingly being taught as a second language because it's an international language and it opens up a lot of opportunities for Bangladeshis. So it is pretty much 100% taught in schools as the second language. Um, so why am I reading a study about what's happening in Bangladesh? The reason why is because they are using a language teaching method in Bangladesh, communicative language teaching, which is something that we use here, but not in such a systematic way as Bangladesh. So I looked at this research paper hoping to find out what the systemic results might be of a communicative approach to teaching language, as opposed to a grammar-based or translation-based method of teaching. So they've been doing this kind of teaching in Bangladesh for the last 30 years. So this study should tell us something about the way communicative language teaching plays out for students. Um, one thing to note, yes, Bangladesh is a very different community than the United States. However, there is a way that we can kind of compare both groups. In the United States, as well as in Bangladesh, marginalized people face additional struggles when learning a second language. A difference would be that in America, English is the dominant language, and in Bangladesh, it's not. So that's a difference. However, a lot of our English language learners here in the States also experience similar issues faced by students in this study, such as lack of language exposure to the target language at home or in outside environments outside of school, which is something that's important for reinforcing language learning outside of the classroom. So this is the population. The study groups that we're looking at um, and the way they were tested, we are looking at reading, writing, and speaking tests that were delivered to a select group of 20 students uh, amongst four schools that were studied. There was also interviews done with 18 teachers. So B, the child techniques. So communicative language teaching for those of you who do not know, is a, it's an approach, not a method. So with communicative language teaching, it's like a theory of language and a theory of learning that teachers put into practice in the classroom. But it's not a method, as in first we do this, and then we do this, and then this is the next step, and then you have to do it this way. Not like that. It's a method. Um, so what are the goals of this method? Communication through interaction. The idea of communicative language teaching is that all language basically is it's uh, to help us communicate. So when we teach language, we should never remove the communicative intent from it. So instead of standing up in front of the classroom and saying, ni hao means hi, repeat, ni hao means hi, I would come in and just say, ni hao, ni hao, ni hao, to everybody until they kind of get me. That's a very simplistic way of explaining it, but that's kind of how it works. When you get into higher up levels, it works in like, once we've got a small vocabulary built up, we might play games where I would have to ask you a question in the target language to learn more about you as a person so that the communicative intent is never removed from it. I'm not looking up, oh, intelligent equals Song Ming. I'm wanting to tell this person that I think that she's really bright, and so how do I say it? The idea is that if there's a communicative intent behind language, there's more of a memory created during the process of using it. Also, implicitly within us as human beings, we've got systems built up in our brains to learn language. And so communicative language teaching uh, leverages these systems. The natural language learning brain that we all have in there 
uh, by just keeping language the way it was always intended to be, by evolution, by people, which is a way of sharing ideas with each other. Okay, so there's four big communicative skills. If I was going to write this slide again, I would put speaking on top because speaking is the first way that young people begin to learn language by listening to speakers. Um, and then eventually we begin to teach children to read symbols that represent the sounds that they have heard and the sounds they are making. And then we teach children how to create those symbols and to set them down on paper to solidify these ideas and to put them down in written form. So language begins with speaking and listening and then it moves on to reading and writing. These are four distinct skills and language learners frequently struggle when it comes to speaking and listening. So these are listed in the order of ease, perhaps, for the average language learner. Most of us that study another language would probably say it's the easiest for me to understand what they mean when I read them. And maybe if I want to tell you what I mean, I might be better off writing it down than saying it. There's a lot less ambiguity in printed things. Um, spoken words and things that we hear are ephemeral. They're in the air, they're here one second, gone the next. Things that are written down are here to refer to, to go back to later, to take our time with. Um, if I'm producing speech, it's a much faster process and I can't edit myself. If I'm producing writing, I can take my time, I can go back, I can make sure I meant what I said, I can show it to somebody else. Is this what I want to say or are you reading me the way I want? So they're different skills. Okay, so now on to the results of this study. This is not what I was hoping to see when I picked up this study. I was, I personally really love communicative language teaching from the teacher's perspective and from the learner's perspective as well. Uh, I've had a lot of success learning language this way and teaching language this way. So I was hoping to see that in a country that has been doing communicative language teaching for 30 years across the board that we would have high levels of success in reading, writing, speaking, and listening. But that's not exactly the case. Um, when they spoke to the 20 students and 18 teachers that they spoke with and they did the reading, writing, listening, and speaking assessments, what they ultimately came up with was these results. So the schools in this study were given nicknames, green school, blue school, red school, and purple school. So if we look at the results, we can see that, yeah, some schools were doing better than others across the board, but I'm sure the first thing you notice is what I noticed, which was that the blue bar, which is representing the written task, the students scored way better on this than the oral task represented by the red bar. These are levels of performance. So from looking at this chart and these results, my thinking is, okay, well, communicative language teaching clearly is not the panacea that I want it to be. Um, that I thought it could be because they are still um, not achieving high levels of success in speaking and listening um, with students, not as high as writing and reading. So if this um, method was significantly more effective, I would expect to see these two numbers a little closer together or honestly to see better scores across the board from the students, but it's just not very impressive. Um, and when looking into why were the results like this, like what's the problem, is there a problem with the method or the theory or the way that it was applied in the classroom, these are some thoughts that I had. Um, so with communicative language teaching, here are some flaws. Um, there, is, there tends to be a lack of proficiency among students. So when communication is the goal, it's more interesting and it's more in the moment. However, it's harder to bring in more nuanced ideas in that moment and with just the, the limited words that we have um, to share with each other, especially as language learners. Um, and uh, you're unlikely to produce a wonderful writer or poet teaching with communicative language learning because there's just a lack of emphasis on form. So most students in a communicative language classroom, I mean, they're not gonna be able to tell you what is alliteration, 
um, and that kind of stuff, because it's actually not as important for the language learner. So it's not something they focus on. Um, another thing found in the study was that uh, in the classrooms, it was felt that there was not enough focus on writing and of going beyond your own experience. Um, a lot of what was happening in classes was just students, you know, sharing with each other, what movie would you like to see, and that kind of thing, um, and less writing for extended periods of time to develop those skills. Although, if you will remember, they still did better on those tests than the oral skills that they were tested on. Um, another important message about communicative language teaching is that just because we're communicating doesn't mean that you don't have to worry about content. Great content is still really important to keep um, students engaged and to keep them learning. So don't have boring classes because people won't want to talk. And the findings, like I mentioned before, can't be strictly generalized to the United States because we speak English as our dominant language. So we are trying to teach students the dominant language as opposed to Bangladesh. They're teaching students a foreign language, a business language, an international language. So in this way, we can't generalize. But a way we can generalize um, is by just keeping in mind that for our English language learners, um, they do require many different ways of practicing language, and they require lots of language exposure to the target language outside of school. And they don't always get that. And for our students who don't get the exposure outside of school, we need to give them our extra attention when we're teaching them. And also, don't give up on communicative language teaching because of this one unpromising study. Another thing that was noted in the study is that the um, schools that were doing this, they all complained about being underfunded and they complained about having like boring curriculum. So that was a big roadblock in the way of making this successful. Um, so I see from the minutes on my video, I have spoken for 12 minutes and that was a lot longer than I was intending. And I have already said most of these things. Um, the last thing I will say is that class sizes of 18 to 24 have been shown to be the ideal class size for a communicative language teaching classroom. Above 24, it gets a little too chaotic, hard to control. Below 18, it gets kind of boring and people don't feel as comfortable opening up because it feels kind of like maybe the spotlight is on them. So they found that the most successful communicative language teaching classrooms had between 18 and 24 people. Um, like I said, content is still really, really important. You need to choose it carefully to help your students break past their silence, which is frequently one of the biggest roadblocks for learners of a second language, breaking past that silence. So thank you for your attention and for viewing this really long video. Appreciate you all and I'll see you next semester.